Hey, what's up, everybody? Jeremy Gerard, Mythic Customs here. Um, had a few minutes tonight, figured I'd do a quick live video. Uh, I actually did a live video last week. Um, kind of took everyone on a tour of the toy room, and people seem to really, really dig it. Uh, thank you to everyone that you know joined me during that live video. Thank you to everyone who commented on it since and who uh, you know messaged me privately to let me know they enjoyed the video. Um, I totally dig doing it. I love just kind of hanging out and talking about Mythic Legion. So like I said, I had a few minutes tonight. Figured I'd jump on. Uh, hey, Steve, Anthony, William, Mark. Got a bunch of people jumping on board. Um, so kind of one of the things I would kind of talk about tonight, I figured, was something that if you do a lot of customs, this is not going to be any you know new information for you. Um, but I get contacted all the time from people who ask me for tips and you know, want uh, just some some guidance on how to get started with customs. Um, and I love talking about it. I think it's really, really cool. I, I really enjoy it. So I figured I'd just kind of talk about some customizing stuff today. People ask me all the time to shoot like instructional videos. And, you know, I don't know, but maybe that's something I will do down the road. Um, but for now, I figured to do a live chat. So this is actually the kind of the workbench back here. Uh, I'm insanely unorganized. Uh, you know, this is... This is kind of where everything happens and you know I got some stuff that I'm staging over there um, it's where I do my painting and stuff but you know one of the things that I thought was really going to be cool to talk about is just how much mileage you can get out of just using other toy lines um, how easy it is to completely completely change the look of a figure without having to paint without having to sculpt i know a ton of people are like hey i'm i'm not a good painter i don't want to ruin mythic legions figures by by you know messing something up and i totally get that i tell people all the time start small um, buy some cheap figures and test it out on those and then get some you know some legion builders and start on those that's a great way to get started but even if you don't want to do that just adding parts onto existing Mythic Legions figures can completely change the look. Um, I've always said that one of the strengths of Mythic Legions is their reuse of the parts library. The fact that they're able to create such incredible variety with the limited parts they have is super, super cool. But let's be honest, when you have a collection that gets sizable, like what I have, you start to realize that everyone's got the same fucking sh Oh, I swore, sorry. Walter's going to get mad at me. Um, everyone's got the same shoes on. Everyone's got the same shoes. I think I saw Steve on here, and I thought I was on. My wife is going to kill me. So I thought that I could uh, I could swear for a minute. Yeah, Steve called me lazy boy. Um, so anyway, you, you can do that. So one of the things I have here, so this is a Lord of the Rings Aragorn figure. I'm going to give away a secret here. You can get these things super cheap. You look on eBay, try to find Lord of the Rings lots of figures, and you can absolutely grab a whole bunch of these things for like a really cheap price. You end up paying, I mean, I've had lots, I mean, you drop a little bit of money. I've had lots where I probably dropped two bucks a figure on these things. Granted, I got like, you know, 70 figures, so I had to drop like 150 bucks on the lot, but you end up really getting a ton of mileage out of these things. And a lot of the Lord of the Rings specifically, there's a lot of lines that you can do this with. But Lord of the Rings, um, the weapons, absolutely you can use weapons on the figures. Um, but one of the things I love to use are these kind of rubbery goods they have. These jackets and this, you know, like the, the skirt type pieces. Because that really, really changes up the look of a figure. And how easy is it to do? Literally, take the figure. So all you got to do, crack it in half. A lot of these things are so darn old that the plastic is pretty, pretty brittle anyway. And look what you see at the top. So you can see how it's constructed. That literally pops right off. And there's a hole right in there. So you take a figure like you got right here. So here's a, just a Goblin Legion Builder, right? Typical Goblin Legion Builder. It's as easy as just popping this apart. throwing this piece on and it completely changes the look of this character now sometimes they're a little tight to pop in um, sometimes I still use the 
kind of like the, the waist armor. Sometimes I don't. It really depends on how it looks. Sometimes there's too much of a gap. So you have to kind of use the waist armor and squeeze it in there. Other times you can make it work. And now I'm having a hard time snapping it, but there we go. So just something as simple as that, you know, you completely change the way that that, that, that figure looks. Two seconds popping that on. You know, if I want to go a step further, so I'll take this now. I'm going to take this rubbery jacket piece off. So I'm just going to snap these arms off. And this will literally slide right off the figure. Now I've got that. So say that I wanted to turn this into like, a, I don't know, like a, a goblin type, you know, rogue character. I've already got a pretty good start right here with just these two little pieces. Pop that on. And this is super simple. For, again, all those people out there that are like, oh, I don't. I don't want to paint. I don't want to sculpt. I don't sculpt very rarely. A couple like some facial hair every once in a while as needed. So yeah. So there you go. You know, that's the start of something. And that it's super simple. You know, but just you look at that and compare it to the other goblins we have in the line. And this gives that character a very, very different look. You know, so like this figure right here, this is one that I did a while back called my Storm Elf. If you look at that lower skirt piece he's got, that's the that's from the Aragorn figure that I just pulled it off. I had another one, obviously. Um, but just doing that, adding a little bit of fur here, and I did on this one paint the hair black, but I just swapped out some, some Mythic Legion's parts to give this elf, we didn't have like a, a darker looking elf that wasn't one of the evilly shadow elves so just that little addition that just that little piece right there as soon as i put that on that kind of changed the way it looked for me and allowed me to start saying like okay you know how am i going to build around that so i'm looking at comments here yeah waist pieces are great sword chain mail chest pieces yeah so dennis was just talking about chest pieces so here's another one. So here's what I did a while back too. This is an orc, obviously. And same thing, um, the Urukai figures from Lord of the Rings, lots of great pieces on those. Same principle for this, this lower skirt piece. And this chest armor came right off of that as well. Um, all the orcs have really similar armor or bare chests. So something as simple as that, and this, this does have a custom head on it as well, but, you know, if you're buying custom heads from, you know, My Action Figure Customs or you're getting them on eBay, um, whatever you're doing, uh, being able to do more than just slap that head on the body, being able to do something like that, that I think really, you know, adds a lot to the figure as well. People saying hello. Thank you again for joining. So here's another one. So this is a skeleton that I did a while back. And this... This actually features an old head that Zombie 13 did, uh, like an orc type skull. And again, I wanted I wanted him to have a different kind of rugged look. Um, and again, I'm I'm specifically showing Lord of the Rings stuff because they work so easily. Um, you do see a little bit the way that it attaches there isn't perfect, but when I pose it, you don't even notice. Um, and that really changes again the look of the figure. That gives them a really cool kind of you know, dirty look that I didn't, wasn't able to get with the existing Mythic Legion's parts. And again, it was simple as just cracking it and popping it in. So Caleb says, what's up? I'm new to the Cabal. Welcome to the Cabal, Caleb. So this is one that I just did this weekend. Um, I know my buddy Travis from the, you know, the podcast from Legion's cast and my wife is going to kill me. He posted a live video the other day of some, uh, some rat heads that he got and he popped them on some goblin bodies and they, they look great. They're my action figure customs. So I got one of those and I wanted to create characters because that's one of the reasons I like adding these third party pieces, not only the heads, but adding whether it's parts from Lord of the Rings toys or I use an insane amount of stuff. Like 
Lord of the Rings is obvious. Uh, Masters of the Universe, that's pretty obvious that people would use those. But because I've been collecting for so many years, I tend to draw on like a, just a silly, silly amount of lines. Stuff you wouldn't expect, like Muppets. I use pieces from Palisades Muppets all the time, actually. Um, Rudolph in the Island of Misfit Toys, I've actually done multiple custom using parts from that. So um, I think that's really helpful because it really allows you to change the look and create a character. So I did this one here, this this custom rat guy, and you know I, I painted him like a you know a grayish rat. I'm gonna post this probably next week or so, um, and I painted the you know the the armor gold on his head to match the the King Noglin body. Let's see if it focuses. But by adding this this soft goody rubbery type piece from a Lord of the Rings figure. You know, it's got a, a sword on the back, sword at the side, and then I gave him a tail. You know, I really think that this character started to come to life, and it wasn't just slapping a head on top of a new body. You know, it's like, oh, it's a rat head on a goblin body. As cool as that is, I like to push it a step further, and I think that if you do stuff like this, if you want to start getting uh, started with customizing, or some people call it kit bashing, you know what? I think that anytime you are changing the look of the figures, even if you're not adding paints and sculpts, even if you're just adding new parts and new weapons, people can say that's kit bash and they can look down on it. Screw that. It's customizing. That's that's my opinion on it. But I think you can make some really, really cool characters, even just doing some stuff like that. Let's see. Customs are awesome. Thank you, Caleb. Hey, Daniel. Yeah, the rat's wicked. Yeah, I've actually got three of them. It's funny. I had them on the table back here, and I had a friend over the other day, and he was geeking out looking at my stuff, and he saw three rats, and he was like, oh, those are the three blind mice, and I totally didn't want to make them blind, um, and I didn't because I really wanted to paint one of them with red eyes, but it, it was so hard for me not to paint all their eyes white and to kind of write the story that they were actually the three blind mice, um, but it didn't fit in with what I had already had in my head, and I was already pretty far down the path of creating the character. So, so I didn't go that route, but yeah, so I've got three of the rats. Um, it's funny. Cause I bought when, when they did the, uh, the sale, my action figure customs, I, I think I bought one and then I started thinking about it. You know, those others look kind of cool. So I placed a second order and got two more and now I have three and I wish I would have gotten more actually. Cause I could have to totally gone down a spiral. It's probably good. I didn't, I could have gone down a spiral and just made a little rat army. Um, so Caleb says, I've seen some people use the Black Series Gamorrean Guard body and Goblin Head. Yeah, actually, I was one of the early ones to do that, to pop that on. A lot of people, that's a really early custom that I did. Um, not saying that I pioneered that, but I definitely, I definitely know a lot of people have seen my recipe for that on my website and, you know, emailed me or messaged me and told me that they, they kind of followed suit. Um, yeah, it works great because when you pop the Gamorrean, when you pop the head off the Gamorrean Guard, um, the hole that's there is like the exact size of a Mythic Legion's 2.0 neck peg. So you can just pop that right in, pop the head on, and the skin color of the uh, of the Gamorrean Guard is pretty much identical to the Goblin Legion Builder. So if you use the mast head, it makes a super, super simple custom that looks really good. Uh, so what do we want to talk about? Anyone have any questions? Like I said, I do that all the time. You know, another Lord of the Rings figure. Um, you know, this one's got a cape, this one's got, you know, this, this piece here, this kind of quiver and everything. Like I said, you get these things at a good price and you can pull so many parts off of them. Um, I tend not to use the heads. I mean, that's the thing I didn't like about Lord. I, mean, I love Lord of the Rings. I love the line for what it is. Um, but the reason I've always really liked Mythic is because it doesn't, it's not tied into a specific property. So you can imagine the characters any way you want. Um, you know, you look at this character and it's the character of how they are. Or you look at the one I had earlier of Aragorn, it's Viggo Mortensen. You, it, I have a hard time seeing it as anything but that. Um, but using the body parts are great. And and like I said, I mean, go to toy shows. Um, when I go to ToyCon, New Jersey, there's a guy there that sells loose figures, Lord of the Rings and stuff, for like five bucks a piece. It might be like five for 20 or something. Um, I always stock up there. And like I said, you can get great, great lots on eBay. Um, just expect that. You know, you're going to pay less per piece if you buy bigger lots. What brand of paint do you like? So Steve's asking what paints I use. Um, 
So I don't know. I think it's pronounced Vallejo. That's how I pronounce it. Vallejo. I don't know. It's uh, you know, V A L L E J O. Um, ninety percent of the work that I do, I use these colors for. Um, and just like I was just saying about buying in lots, I tend to buy like sets of colors because if you buy them individually on like Amazon, these are like six, seven bucks a tube and they're small, uh, you know, for comparison, these are like, these are the tubes that you get at like the craft store for like a dollar. So you get a lot less paint for seven times more money. Um, but I love them. I think they work really, really well. Um, I tend not to prime. Um, I will spray a base coat on stuff, especially if I'm doing like the 3D printed stuff. I'll spray a base coat of usually black, sometimes brown or gray, depending what the end color is going to be. Um, but this is 90% of what I use. I do like these as well. This Craft Smart, these metallics, I find the metallics work really, really good for like dry brushing. Because I'm dry brushing anyway, I'm just kind of getting such a, a light coat, just a, you know, some kind of detail on it. These work great. I don't need to spend the money for the metallics for this line. These work totally fine. These are really like a lot if I need more deep coverage, if I really have to cover a lot. Um, but I've been doing less and less of that. I kind of stopped doing a lot of all over body painting type stuff. It's, it's, I especially don't like painting joints. People ask that all the time about painting joints. I hate that. Um, do I sculpt original parts? I do not sculpt original parts, which is why my buddy Travis and Steve like to call me lazy boy because I don't sculpt. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I know what I'm good at, and that's not it. Uh, I definitely, I, like I said, I've sculpted a few little things here and there, but, uh, but uh, for the most part, I use other people's stuff. I've always said that my strong point when it comes to customizing is knowing which pieces to put together to create characters. And that's kind of why I want to talk about that stuff tonight, about using stuff like Lord of the Rings figures, because it's super easy. Um, and you got a big library to choose from. Um, but that's what I really like doing. I like looking at like the, the, the stuff I'm going to post tomorrow, the, the figure I'm going to post tomorrow on my Instagram page and on Facebook. I'm going to actually, I, I took a little bit of a break. I've been posting like a lot of best of stuff, but I'm posting a new original piece tomorrow. Um, and it's a tribute to something that I got in my head that I wanted to make. Um, and I like doing that because it's like a design problem for me and I'm a designer, so I dig doing that. But really, I just dig bring, like, putting new parts together, doing some painting um, and occasional light sculpting. Um, any early reveals for Legion's Con? Um, reveals in terms of, you know, I can, I mean, the stuff we have planned, you know, uh, it's November 14th. We've already announced the date. Uh, for those that went last year, this year, it's going to be in the same venue. We're still with ToyCon, but we're going to start earlier. So it's not like it's going to be all day of ToyCon and then just a little few hours after ToyCon. We are going to be going on while ToyCon is going on. Um, the plans are actually to go past ToyCon, though, because there was kind of a cool aspect to that, like, after-party type feel. So we are going to go a little bit past when ToyCon does get done. Um, so more time, bigger space. We're hoping to have more marketplace stuff. That's one of the things last year a lot of people commented that there wasn't a lot of stuff to buy because last year was more like art exhibit. That's really, you know, art exhibit and fan meetup. Um, so this year we're hoping to have more marketplace sellers there. Um, obviously the customizers will be there. Um, the big thing th this year is we're going to have panels. So we're going to have panel discussions. Um, you know, I'm expecting that we're going to have a panel discussion of customizers. You know, hopefully people like myself and Dennis and Nikki um, can get up there and do do a panel discussion and answer some questions and talk about the work we do. Um, and obviously there's going to be a full horseman panel. Um, and, you know, we'll see. We'll see what they want to talk about and what they might want to reveal. But a lot of planning to do, but really excited. We already have people telling us they're going to, like, fly in from overseas to come to Legion's Con, which is blows my mind, but it's so absolutely awesome. Um, how do I overcome a creative block or do I even get them? I really haven't yet. I mean, sometimes, sometimes I do get just I don't have time to do it, so I, I don't come down. Um, but I draw inspiration from so many places. I, I see things and I'm just like, oh, I wanna, I wanna do something like that. Like, so I don't know if anyone's re ever read the Sandman comics by Neil Gaiman. Um, I got it in my head. I don't. I do have it out. So, this is how things start for me. 
this book came from a World of Warcraft figure. And it's a, it's a good sized book, you know, if I put it up against that rat guy, you can see it's not, it's not small, it's a big volume. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, what would I use this for? And if you've ever read the Sandman books by Neil Gaiman, there's uh, a group of characters in there called the Endless, kind of like, they're kind of like gods, for lack of a better term. Um, but one of them's called Destiny, and he has this big book that he carries around with the, you know, everything that's ever going to happen written inside. So I saw that, and I'm like, oh, that looks like Destiny's book. And that just put me down the spiral of, I need to create all of the Endless, I, the, that whole group. So this is one that I did. This is Death, and she's not done yet, but she's getting there. Um, this is the easiest one to do because Death basically looks like a goth chick. So that's kind of what I did. I just took an elf, you know, um, some Xylona body parts for the white, painted the head of a, a Talon Frostbow. It's not going to focus. Come on, focus. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the question was, how do I create, overcome creative block? Uh, I just, I look around. I get inspired by things. You know, I see things and I'm like, how would I do, how would I do that? You know, and I try to do things that other people aren't doing. Um, like, Take The Witcher, for instance. I loved The Witcher on Netflix. I thought it was great. I'm not a gamer, never played the game, haven't read the books yet. I'm probably going to read them now. Um, but I'm not making a Witcher figure because so many other people are doing it, and they've done such great jobs. Dennis did a Witcher figure a long time ago. I'm not going to improve on that, so I have no interest in doing one. But I haven't seen anyone do Mythic Legion's Characters of the Endless or you know some of the other stuff that I've done. I did the Bounty Hunters and everything from Star Wars. Um, so that's how I overcome it. I just look around, I get inspired, I watch things, um, I read things, and I decide that I want to I wanna do them. And usually what happens is once I do one thing, I just go down a spiral. Like my samurai customs that I did, I did one. I did one samurai, and that made me start saying, well, what about a goblin? What about an elf? What about this? And before you knew it, I had like 12 of them. Uh, do I use any type of sealer or top coat? The only time I use sealer is if it's a part, if I'm selling it, I seal it. If it's me, I don't, I don't even take the time. But if it's something, all the stuff that I've sold, I tend to seal those just so they have a little bit more durability for who I'm sending it to. Um, if it's like a weapon and I know it's gonna go in and out of the hand, um, I'll, I'll seal the weapon and everything. And it, it doesn't, it's, it's not perfect. You know, it's custom paint. It's not factory paint. It's not as durable as factory paint. You've got to know that going in. Um, but I will use sealer. And I just use Krylon, uh, Krylon like sealer for, for that stuff. Yeah, I agree. Mythic Legions is the best toy, toy line. Another question about top coat. Uh, video from the other day. Your collection blew me away. No, I'm looking at other clients for spare parts. I, I hear you. I have pulled so many pieces out of my collection. Things I genuinely like have pulled them apart because I'm like, that that's a piece that I could use right now. That's a piece I could use for this custom. Um, and I just, I tear it apart. Um, you kind of have to decide what's most important to you. You know, if, if you really want to build, and I will, I try not to do it. If it's something that's going to cost me a fortune to replace, I'll just have to accept that I'm not going to use that part. Um, but it hasn't really happened yet. <laughs> uh, greetings from Australia. Hey, I want to go to Australia. It looks beautiful. Hope you're staying safe over there with everything going on, all the fires. Um, I look at your website all the time. Thank you. That's why I put it there. Um, actually, keeping the website going is like a ton of work. Um, there have been times where I don't want to do it, but then I hear from people that are like, oh, it's really helpful. I love following all the recipes. It helps me get inspired. So that's why I continue to do it. That's why I put that up there. So thank you. Absolutely. Uh, destruction of the Endless would be amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking Ogre Scale for that, actually. So this is, this is what I'm messing around with for Dream. And obviously, I got to paint his head. I um, mean, I got his his like battle mask for it that I'm I'm working on, and you know this is so this is from a McFarlane Twisted Land of Oz wizard figure that I bought and, and talk about cannibalizing parts. I bought this used just for this piece. 
just because it was the perfect piece that I could go here to create Morpheus's battle mask. So, but yeah, destruction, I'm totally thinking of Ogre Scale. Is there anything not in the current or upcoming lineup of figures that you'd like to see made by the Four Horsemen? <sighs> um, I mean, like everybody, I want to see robed wizards. Um, I, I, I'm excited for new body part options. So one of the things that they're doing, and you saw this in the Aerith Air Wave, where they started to refresh the parts library. They gave us bare hands. They gave us bare feet. Um, you know, they gave us some new torsos. That's going to continue. The next, you know, the coming ways that they're going to do are going to have new parts that are going to refresh the library we have. So I, I can't tell you what those parts are going to be, but they've, it's no secrets, they've long said that, yeah, they understand that people want, you know, like, you know, wrapped leggings for barbarians and forearms and, you know, bare skeleton pieces and stuff. So they're aware of all that. They hear, they read these comments, you know, Eric and, you know, Eric and Cornboy and Jim, they, they know what people want. So we're going to see more of that. And that's what I'm most excited for. Um, I went in pretty big on the Aerith Airway for that reason, because all of the new part, I mean, the figures themselves are awesome. And I'm going to display all of them as is, but the actual new figures as well, the new parts are super, super exciting. What's a good silver metallic paint to match a Templar armor? I am not the person to ask paint matching to. Dennis Derby is. Dennis Derby is awesome when it comes to that. Um, the way that I match paint, th this is, these are my paint trays. I am super messy and super disorganized. When I do something cool, it's largely an accident. Seriously, I don't. I'm not good at paint matching. I do trial and error. I just try a couple things. I put little dabs on to see how close I can get it. Um, but I don't write down, like once I do it once, I couldn't tell you how I did it because I don't write down my recipes. I know Zombie 13 like actually writes down recipes for how to match certain colors. I think Dennis does the same thing. Um, ask those questions on the group though. I'm sure they'll answer it. I'm not the one to answer that for you. I will stare you wrong. Um, love my bounty hunters. Yeah, thank you. The bounty hunters were super popular. And again, talking about going down a spiral, um, I started by doing the Boba Fett because Boba Fett's my favorite, and just as soon as I had him, I thought he looked so cool with the other figures. But I wanted to, I wanted to give him his his the rest of the bounty hunters, and I started thinking, well, how would I do these characters? And you know, the first one I thought about was IG88, and I said, well, how what would I make IG88 into? And I said, well, I'd make him into like an Iron Golem. And then I said, oh, oh my, are you kidding me? IG, Iron Gollum, the initials work really well, which made me wonder, I mean, maybe that's what it stood for in Star Wars. Um, but just stuff like that gets my creative juices flowing and I start doing more. Um, and, you know, I, I should also mention, a lot of people say, oh, I get inspired by seeing your work on the Cabal. I get inspired by seeing other people on the Cabal too. When I see the work that Nikki does or Dennis or, you know, Luis, Joe, Rob, Everybody, all of these people out there, when I see their amazing customs, Drew, um, that gets me excited. I really want to do that. The only thing I hate is when they do something I wanted to do first, uh, like the the kind of goblin, uh, the goblin with a pot on his head that my action figure customs released recently. It was a, a Jim Pants and Creation sculpt. You know, as soon as I saw that, I said, oh, that'd be a cool goblin chef, and I got it in. And I put it on my workbench here, and I had 10 other projects in front of it, so I didn't touch it. And before I could even get, you know, a base coat of paint on it, like I saw like four people post Goblin Chefs, which immediately made me say, well, I've kind of lost my interest in doing that. Um, I actually did just do it recently just to get it off my table. But that's the one thing. I get inspired by people to see what they're doing. I, but I do get bummed, obviously, when someone has a great idea and they get to it before I do. Yeah, let's see what else we got here. A little bit more time. I, I hope you guys enjoy this. Like I said, I totally dig hanging out and chatting and talking. So I hope it's worth your time. I mean, I guess if you're hanging out doing this, it's worth your time, right? Hopefully we'll see an ogre scale skeleton. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. 
I mean, I don't know how reusable the parts would be. Obviously, you know, a big part of the line is reuse of parts. But, uh, but yeah, definitely cool. Cabal is great. Absolutely. Yeah. I love the Cabal. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I'm working on. Got some stuff. This is something. You want to see something else? So, um, Sabadam, I think that's how you say his name. Um, he was super cool. He sent me a bunch of heads uh, a few months ago, and I've had him on my workbench here. I've been working on them. So this is one that I've been working on that I'm super excited about. Um, when I shot the video last week, and I showed all of my uh, like animal characters, and I said, "Hey, right in the middle, there's a throne, but the king's not on that throne because he's in the back room being painted." Um, that was this guy. So he's not done yet. I still got some more paints to go on his head but uh, and his feet. But that's a start there. And actually, he's got – he sent me two of them. So I have this one as well that I'm working on. Um, and I think this one I'm eventually going to sell. I think the, the calm face I'm eventually going to sell, and I'll keep the, the angry face. Yeah, that's the plan at least. very much enjoying this well I'm happy to help I'm happy to do that like I said a lot of people ask me to give them tips and to shoot videos so I figured you know I'll start just by talking about how to you know break stuff apart and you know how I swap parts and you know answer any questions people have but yeah like I said it's as easy as that you look at a figure like this you know I would get this and I would just start to cannibalize the parts take this piece off that's a cool thing that I can use that's a cool quiver you know, I got this cape here that I can use. I got this lower skirt piece. I just did a, I just did a custom using this. And sometimes you do have to alter it. So this piece here, you can see it's not, it's not flat. It's got this little lip here. So this is an example where what I would do with this is I would just pop that off. But then when I did use this, I just kind of shaved it right along the belt line. So I didn't have those little lips. And then, you know, just pop kind of the other piece on top of it, one of the, one of the normal folds pieces right on top of it. And it gives another, it gives a really cool look. It, you know, extends down. And just super simple stuff like that completely changes the profile of the character. Like I said, you know, you look at, you look at that and the way that that changes the way the elf armor looks. I really think that's cool. I like that a lot. Easy ways to add some variety. So we've been doing this for about a half hour now. That's kind of what I want to talk about. Um, like I said, a lot of cool stuff going. I've been showing you a bunch of, bunch of stuff that I'm working on. Um, well, tomorrow I've got some, something pretty cool that I'm excited to post. Uh, something I worked on for a little while. And uh, actually... Like I said uh, a few minutes ago, I, I kind of took a little bit of time off to do like a best of stuff, give me a little bit of a break, um, just really from taking the photos. Because that's one of the things that's tough is, you know, when I do these, so people ask me a lot of times, so how do you find time to do it? You know, I come down here, uh, I'm an early riser, so, and my family's not. So like on weekends, I'll be up at like 4.30 and they're not up till eight. So that gives me a couple hours to come down here um, put a podcast on, you know, I listen to uh, Travis and Steve and Pete, you know, being idiots and I love it. I listen to that. Or, uh, a lot of times I'll listen to HP Lovecraft, um, like actually audiobooks. Um, I don't know why that inspires me to do this, but it does. So I'll do that. And I just work, I do these things, but once the customs are done and I, I tend to do them in batches when I do multiple at once, because I can only, you know, if I'm working on this, you look at his head here and I based that out in black and then I painted all of the, the gray fur and then I did, you know, the pink nose and the ears. Then I did the teeth. Then I did all the gold. So right there, that's like four different sessions of painting. I didn't do that all at once. Um, when I come down painting the white teeth that, you know, took 30 seconds. I don't want to end, you know, I want to do something else. So that's why I tend to do multiple projects at once. But after the project's done, then I got to photograph it. 
then I've got to put it into Instagram. I've got to write the bios and write the recipes. Once I post it, I want to add it to my website and everything. So there's a lot that goes into actually sharing this stuff, um, which is why I'm so happy that people do find value in it and do appreciate it. Um, but that is also why I took a little bit of a break. But tomorrow I'm back. I'm starting posting new original stuff again. So I'll be doing that. And uh, a couple people have asked me about my sale items. For a while, I was selling stuff on Saturdays. Um, and I took a little bit of a break from that, partially because of the holidays. I think people were tapped out from holidays anyway. Um, but I am going to start that up again. I've got I've probably got six or seven pieces that I either decided to sell or I made specifically for sale. Um, I've got a couple dwarves. I've got some some cool undead characters, um, some barbarian stuff, um, a pretty big variety. So. I'll be posting those not this Saturday. I think next Saturday I start that up again, but should be a little something for for everybody. I need the rat heads. Mike says, "Yeah, dude, they're awesome." I like I said, I got three of them and they're wicked cool, very very cool. And I'll I'll be posting those soon. But so with that, I think we're done for the night. Um, like I said, Jeremy Mythic Customs. Thank you everyone for for logging on. Thank you for joining. Um, I will post this video in the cabal, so if anyone wants to, anyone who jumped on late or anyone who missed it, didn't get it live, who wants to jump on, who wants to see it, I'll post it. And I'll be doing more of these, so see you then.